Amen. This is a happy day. So let's give the Lord a clap offering. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Who gave this woman to be wife to this man? The congregation might be seated. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are approaching you again humbly, Father, this afternoon, thanking you once again for your goodness, for your love, for your mercy, and for everything you do in the lives of your children. Father, thank you for this day, because prior to the foundation of this world, Lord, you knew that today this will happen, Lord. Nothing is taking you by surprise. Lord, we pray that the blessings that you have provided for this day, be poured down, Lord Father, in this service. May the Holy Spirit come and guide and lead us forever. Be the Alpha and the Omega, Lord. We rebuke everything that is contrary to your divine nature and your divine will, Lord, and commit everything unto that. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And on behalf of the families and church, we welcome you to this marriage ceremony, which is a joyful day for Sister Kayla and Brother Charles Hamilton Jr. Amen. Amen. I will invite you to the reading of the scripture, and I will take some portion of the scripture from Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible says that, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. What I want you to remember is man of Genesis 2 came out from the dust of the ground. The scripture continues, and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Verse 18, the Bible continues and say, and the Lord God say, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. So the one who saw that God being lonely is not good, it's not me and you. It is God himself who saw that it was not good for man to be alone. Verse 19, and out of the ground, again, the Lord God formed every beast of the field. And every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. If you notice here, 
the body of a man that was formed in Genesis 2, 7, and the beast and the fowl, everything came out from the ground. Amen. The Bible continue on verse 20. And Adam gave the name, gave names to all cattle and to all fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh. He never left it open. He closed it. Closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God has taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. It was God who made the woman and took the woman and bring her back to man. Amen. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. And they both were naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. From these portion of the scriptures that we read, I want to speak briefly on marriage as the reflection of God. Marriage as the reflection of God. If you open your scriptures, which I don't want you to do now, in the book of Genesis, Genesis started with the genealogy of the earth. It tells us how God began to create from the first day all the way to the seventh day where God rested himself. On the first day, we found out that the light came out. On the second day, God divided the firmament. On the third day, the ground of the earth came out. And out of the ground, God began to bring grass, began to bring fruit, uh, 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 trees, and all kinds of vegetation. In other words, botany life. And then from there, on the fourth day, God spoke that there will be lights on the firmament and the zodiac begin to be expressed on the face of the sky. On the fifth day, we find out that God progressed in, in his work and he began to create the cattle, the fishes, the fowl, fill up the seas and the air was filled with all kinds of birds and he created also the creeping things. But I'm going to stop right there before I can get on the sixth day. And Everything that God was creating from the first day all the way to the fifth day were only expressions of God. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 19 verse 1 to 3 that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day ordereth speech and night unto night it showeth knowledge. There is no speech, no language where the voice is not heard. In other words, everything that God created, when you look at the sky, there is an expression of God through the sky. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1 verse 20 says that, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power, and Godhead so that they are without excuse. In other words, everything that God was creating, whether it was a tree, whether it was a fish, whether it was a fowl, whether it was a creeping things, whether it was an animal, everything was only expressing God. Can you say amen? amen. And then we notice here that in Genesis 2, man was made out of the dust of the ground. And not only was man made out of the dust of the ground, but the creeping things, the animal, the beast, and the fishes, and the fowl, everything came from the dust of the ground. Even though one from another are different in their species, yet nevertheless everything came from the same source and the same material. Paul say in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 39, that all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of man, another flesh of beast, another of fishes, and another of bird. But all these flesh came from one source, 
which is the ground or the dust of the earth. In other words, man of Genesis 2, 7 was not in the image of God. The man of Genesis 2, 7 was in the image of an animal. In the message in question and answer on Genesis in 53, Brother Branham says, and then he put man in the dust of the earth, which was first man, Adam. And that was, and that man was made after the image. This human man here is made after the image of an animal. These human bodies are made in the image of animals. Amen? Amen? We all are subject to corruption. If a man die, he rot. We must bury him. If a fish die, the fish rot. If an animal die or a dog dies, we must bury that dog. If not, it will stink. Because every flesh, whether it's a man, whether it's a, uh, it's a fowl of the, uh, of the heaven, whether it's a fish, whether if it's a creeping things, everything came from one source, which is the dust of the ground. And all those sources are corruptible or subject to corruption. In, the mess in uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 23, Paul says that they change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. So man is corruptible. He say in the image of a corruptible man and the bird and the four-footed beast and creeping things. So Paul here again in Romans 1, 23 is showing that every flesh is still corruptible. Man is corruptible. Animals are corruptible. Creeping things are corruptible. Fishes are corruptible. Birds are corruptible. Why? Because they came from the same source. They came from the dust of the earth. There was only one man that could defile that law. Because that man was not you and me. That man was the visible image of the invisible God. And his name was the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the scripture said that God suffered not his body to see corruption. That was the only body that could not rot. And he could not rot because that was God himself made flesh in a human being. Everything else could rot except the body of Jesus Christ. So what I'm trying to say here is everything that was created was only an expression of God. But it was not the image of God. If we go back now in Genesis 1 verse 26 the Bible says that God said, let us create man on the sixth day in our own image and in our own likeness. That is the man that was created in the image of God. The animal expressed God, but they were not the image of God. The trees expressed God, but they were not the image of God. Amen? The creeping things express God. The zodiac express God. But none of them were in the image of God. That's why God was not satisfied until he could create something that looked exactly like himself. Amen? Amen? And the Bible says in uh, John chapter 4 verse 24 that God is a spirit. So if God created man in his own image, in his own likeness, what kind of man was that man? That man was a spirit man. So the image and the likeness of God is not the man of Genesis 2-7. The image and the likeness of God is the man of Genesis 1-26. It is a man that was made in his image, in his own likeness, and that man was a spirit man. Amen? That's why when Jesus came... Jesus said that man shall not live by what? Bread alone. Bread is the man of Genesis 2-7. But man shall live by every word. The man that live by the word of God is not the man of Genesis 2-7. It is the man of Genesis 1-26. Amen. Amen? The image of God was created in Genesis 1-26. That's why Jesus said that Woman, the hour cometh 
And now is that the true worshiper must worship God in what? In spirit, because that is the image of God. The true worshiper will worship God in spirit and in truth, because the spirit was the image of God. And if you look at that image, when he came out from its own birth, God never created only a man. The Bible says that he created man, male, and female. Amen? So from the very birth of a man, out of his own creator, man came as a joint unit, as a dual being, as a man that was already connected to his mate. In other words, from eternity, we were already joined together. Amen? What God did in Genesis 2 to take the woman and bring him to the man is only to reflect what already existed in Genesis 1. Man was already joined to his wife. Man was already connected to his wife. Man was not, could not be separated from his wife. And when in Genesis 2, God separated the woman from a man, that's why God instituted marriage. Why? To bring the woman back to her position. What is the position? Is to reflect God. Because God also is male and female. That's why he created man in his own image, male and female. That's why marriage is a necessity of God. Everybody here? That's why marriage started as the first thing in the book of Genesis. And marriage ended the book of Malachi. Marriage started in the book of Matthew on the first chapter. And on, in the book of Revelation, we're also talking about the marriage of the Lamb. And even the first miracle that Jesus done, he made it. He completed that miracle during a wedding day. Because weddings are special. Amen? Amen? The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, verse 18, 22, chapter 18, verse 22, the Bible says, Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, come on, and obtain favor of the Lord. So when you find a wife, young man, there is a favor of God that is connected to a wife. That's why sometimes you will notice, not only sometimes, but most of the time, when a man is single, he looks like he's spinning around. He looks like he cannot save his money. He looks like everything he's doing is not stable. But let that man find a good wife. And you will find that man begin to prosper. That man begin to blossom. Why? Because the one who found a wife, found a good thing. And he obtained favor from the Lord. That's why things begin to work in a marriage quickly. You begin to wonder, what was I doing with money? But now it seems like I'm re I have responsibility, yet I can still save. Why? Because the favor of God will come upon you when you find a good wife. Why? Because marriage is a reflection of God. Marriage is a reflection of Almighty God. Dear beloved, we are gathered here. In the sight of God and in the face of this company, to join together this man and this woman in a holy matrimony, which is commanded by St. Paul to be honorable among all men. It is therefore not by any to be entered into unadvisably or lightly, but advisably, soberly, and in the fear of God into this holy state, these two persons, Sister Keller and Brother Charles Hamilton, present come to be joined if there is any person here that can show a just cause why they should not be lawfully joined together in this holy matrimony do you now speak or from hereafter in other words forever hold your peace i give you a few seconds so i have not heard anybody so forever Hush. I will require forever. Everybody okay? I will require and will charge you both. As you shall surely answer at the day of judgment. When the secret of all hearts shall be disclosed. That if either of you know any impediment. Why you should not be lawfully joined together in this matrimony. 
Do you now confess it? For be it assured unto you that any couple that are joined otherwise than God's word do allow their marriage is not lawful. By duly believing that you have considered this solemn obligation that you are about to assume, then that you have prepared to enter upon the same reverently, discreetfully, soberly, and in the fear of God. I shall propose to you the marriage covenant. I will require the token of this law. You will declare the same as you join your right hands together. Starting with Brother Charles. Brother Charles Hamilton Jr., will you have this woman to be your lawful wedded wife, to live together in this holy state of matrimony? <laughs> Give him some volume, please, brother, so everybody can hear it. A little bit from volume. Amen. Please repeat after me. I, Charles Hamilton Jr. I, Charles Hamilton Jr. Take you, Kayla Hamilton. Take you, Kayla Hamilton. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have, to have and, to hold, and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. I promise to honor. I promise to honor. To love. To love. And cherish. cherish in sickness and health. Riches or, poverty, riches or poverty, I will forsake all others, I will forsake all others and, cleave only unto you, and cleave only unto you until death do us part, until death do us part. According, to God's holy ordinances, according to God's holy ordinances, I give you this ring, give you this ring as a token of my love. God, are pretty good. Yes. Praise God. <laughs> now, Sister Kayla Hamilton, will you have this man to be your lawful wedded husband to live together in this holy state of matrimony? Yes, I do. <laughs> Please repeat after me. I, Kayla Hamilton, I, Kayla Hamilton take you, Charles Hamilton, Jr., to be, my husband, to be my husband, to have and to hold, to have and to hold. From, this day forward, from this day forward, I promise to honor, I promise to, honor to, love, to love, and cherish, and cherish in, sickness and health, in sickness and health, riches or poverty. Riches or poverty. I, will forsake all others, I will forsake all others and cleave only unto you, and cleave only unto you. until death. Do us, part. Until death do us part. According to God's holy ordinances. According to God's holy ordinances. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token of my love. As a token of my love. <laughs> she put it in pretty good. Glory to God. We still need the microphone, my brother. The couple asked for something special. Only the pastor knows the seals. They both sent me what they want to express to each other. So I'm the only one knowing. But now those seals are going to be broken. So each other want to pour their heart to express exactly what they're feeling toward one another. So Sister Keller, you go ahead and start. To my Charles Allen, the love of my life, where do I begin? We met each other in 2009 when we were two broken people not looking for love. But somehow the Lord saw fit to put us together. We have had our ups and downs, but I would do it all over again with you. When I was 16 years old, I prayed for my husband in specific. And by golly, the Lord Jesus Christ loved me enough. He gave me every quality I asked for and need. 
you may not have had our first, but we are going to have our present and future together. I love how we raise our children with Christ being our headship. I love how you seek God's face before every decision concerning our lives and family. When I think of my Charles Allen, I think of how caring you are towards others before your own needs and wants. I think of how humble you are, even when you should be upset. I think of how acceptable you are to, to my needs. I think of how responsible you are with our family by leaving us to provide in Kentucky. I think of how loving you are when you kiss my head as I sleep or as you leave in the middle of the night to go to work. I think of how elated you get when we are running around the house, playing and cracking jokes on one another during family time. I think of how silly you are with us at times and how serious you get when I spend too much. <laughs> I say all of this to say that for the first time in my life, I have found true love, someone I can truly call my own. I see why the Lord put us together. He took two broken people and made us whole. He made us whole and we are now whole together. We get to share this beautiful life together and show our children what a Christ-led marriage looks like. With Jesus Christ leading the way, we cannot fail. I love you so much. Praise God. <laughs> Congratulations, Sister Kayla. Thank you. That was lovely. Go ahead, Brother Charles. That's it, my brother. Go ahead. You can do it. From the first time I met you, there was a mystery about you. see it in those priceless hours just talking to you or Jesus. I would watch you for hours as we would walk, talk, while we played games, while you laughed, even when you were sad. And I could never figure out what was going on in you. Why was I so hypnotized? Why was I so absorbed with you? Why was I so mesmerized? What I've learned about mysteries is that you cannot figure them out. They have to speak for themselves. They have to tell you what they are. They have to tell you what they mean. But from the very first time that you see it, in the end you understand it was telling you the whole time, and I missed it. figure out what was in front of you. That great something that always was around you. That great something when I looked into your eyes. That great something that had me so mesmerized, so hypnotized, and so absorbed. That great something heard about love all my life, but now I see it. I see it's unconditional, and I see it in you. For the rest of my life, I will express to you the same love and dedication that was hidden to me, but was always known to you. I will preserve every moment. I will shelter each and every moment, each and every memory within my heart. I will treasure all of you, all of your beauty, all of your joys, all of your sadness, all of your imperfections, all of your battles, all of your shortcomings. Any and everything that involves you, I want to be there with you, walking with you, and embracing every moment I can, because all I want is you. Many people don't live out their dreams of true happiness. They fantasize, they wish, and daydream about what it could be, only to realize they're living with regrets. The opportunities they miss, the courage that they lack, and the know-how to execute. I'm living my dreams. I'm a great 
is in the head, it is in here. The things I fantasize in the life have become my reality. And my reality gives me no time to daydream. In you I have found the courage to execute any and everything that comes my way. I have found courage to love beyond our disagreements. My only regrets are the opportunities that I missed to express all of my love to you. From this day forward, I promise anew to you to be patient when I don't understand your emotions. I promise to dedicate myself to give you security in your affections. I promise to be more sincere with your passions. I promise to answer before you ask in those silent moments when your atmosphere is communicating to me. I promise to love you with all joy and sincerity. I promise to accept and carefully nurture the changes that you go through in life considering myself because you are a part of me. These things I promise to you from now throughout eternity because from now throughout eternity I will share these things with my best friend. Let's give the Lord a clap. What a special time. Very, very special. I remember one time I was talking to them, and Brother Charles was expressing his heart. He said, Brother Stephen, when I was talking to Sister Kayla, when I look, something came up. I say, I can see in her a mother, the mother of my children. Amen? Praise God. Let's go ahead and join hand, and the congregation can pray with me as well. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are approaching you again once again. Father, hearing everything that was spoken and expressed, Lord, Father, from the heart of your children. Lord, it is nothing but the working of the Spirit of God in the life of your children. Lord, they have experienced one another throughout the years. But what I'm praying is for a new hold, a second new fresh touch in this marriage like they never seen before, Lord. Father, may the blessing of Abraham come down, Lord, Father, and rest upon them and their children. Father, I come against every demonic spirit that have been fighting, Lord, Father, this couple for years, and I rebuke it to the dry places. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, fill him with what they lack. Father, let them prosper. Let the favor that you have connected to wedding come, Lord Father, and express itself in its fullness. Lord, bless them beyond what they can imagine. And if it's your will, give them another child. Or children, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, wherever the struggle, even if it's a financial struggle, of physical struggle. Father, I pray, may the power of the Holy Spirit touch and quicken and bring healing to every aspect, Lord, so that what was before will be completely wiped out, Lord. All that we can retain and bring to memory will be the good time and what can encourage us, strengthen us, and give us more determination to face what is before us. Just like David used his old experience, Father, to face Goliath, may every experience never be used to discourage, to destroy, or to separate. But only, Lord, Father, to bring closer and to overcome that which they are facing in the future. Father, we thank you and bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a clap offering again. Glory to God. By the power and authority vested to me by Almighty God to be his servant, and by this authority vested to me by the state of North Carolina, I pronounce this man, Charles Hamilton Jr., and this woman, Kayla Hamilton, husband and wife in the name of Jesus Christ. And listen to this carefully. What God has joined together. Let no man. Man means man. Let nobody. 
put it asunder. Brother Charles, you can now lift up the veil and kiss your wife. You may turn around and look at the congregation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm introducing you the couple of Charles and Kayla Hamilton Jr. God richly bless you. You may turn on the light. You may stand. Glory to God. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Remember when you get to the reception area, make a left. If you have some confusion, you can just follow somebody who's going there. So it's a little bit confusing. There is a picture. When you get there, make a left. Take a left. The picture is right there on the board. Make a left. Okay? 
If you got any problem, just wait for someone. Just follow. Everything will be all right. We thank you all. God richly bless you. And may we continue to enjoy the day. God bless you.